Good morning. Well, I may be a little loopy today. Didn't get home till about uh, one in the morning from playing a uh, Magic the Gathering 2015 pre release last night. Didn't get to sleep till about 2, and then I woke up at like 7.30. So, uh, just a little tired today. But, we're still going to have some fun. Well, you work overnights, Jim, so, you know, that's not saying much. Okay, where are we here? Living by luck. Resume game. We are back in not a base. Okay, what all do we got going again? Alien plasma technology is it excellent and almost done. We're not building any... No, we're building armor. We finished three, it looks like. Greg Draco is hurt. Smitty Leroy Jenkins is hurt. Mifatu Jr. is hurt. C.K. Hawk is hurt. And Draknon 1 is hurt. So far, we've lost... Malkuth once, me once, Draknon once, Aso Thorns once. I think I'm gonna hire one or two more backups here. Ooh, that looks good. Lots of green there. Let's hire this guy. Claire King looks nice across the board. And Yuma Kuruma. Higher selected. Okay, what do we got over here? The armor, alanium, and alloys. Shoulders. No tanks. Here's my planes. Not a jet fighter. The beer run. Deathwing 1. We gotta rename Deathwing 1 still. Um, what do we call Deathwing 1? Let's see here. Well, we've already got not a jet fighter, so I don't know I want to do not a jet fighter and not a plane. Jamming, dude. We'll come back to it. <laughs> I guess let's speed time up a bit. Oh, we got research finished. One second here, guys. The Alien Scout is a small craft with larger crew than the Light Scout. Though still a scout craft, it is larger, better armed, and more dangerous than its predecessor. The design consists of two crew compartments, a sizable semicircular forward compartment that contains the ship's control systems, and a circular bay at the rear of the vessel that houses the ship's power source. 
It has substantial armor plating and its around its key compartments, usually 8 millimeters thick, but rising to double that in some areas, perhaps suggesting the armor on the Light Scout was in fact little more than a heat shield. This makes it a much more formidable combatant than the Light Scout, particularly coupled with a plasma beam that has greater range and inflicts additional damage. The hull is dotted with an extensive network of sensors that feed data into the crew compartment. These glowing eyes seem to track everything from airspeed to infrared emissions and possibly represent the method by which the craft gathers intelligence on our planet and our species. Search. New soldiers have arrived. You know what? Let's go back into not a base. I'm going to build another radar array. Here we go. Alien plasma technology. Studying the innards of the alien plasma pistol and plasma rifle has given us a basic understanding of the science behind extraterrestrial directed energy weapons. We remain some distance from replicating plasma-based weapons ourselves, even in a laboratory setting, but our work raises the tantalizing possibility of battlefield laser weapons. A brief explanation of the generation of a plasma bolt is as follows. Firstly, the weapon draws power from an alunium cell and uses it to fuel a powerful array of particle accelerators. Secondly, these accelerators superheat a large number of atoms into a state of ionized gas within the heat-proofed chamber of the weapon. Thirdly, two helical spirals of electromagnets in the barrel of the weapon pulse simultaneously, drawing the plasma from the chamber and spinning it into a bolt while accelerating it to muzzle velocity. Finally, a graviton emitter in the muzzle of the weapon launches a graviton particle into the plasma bolt as it exits the barrel. The graviton particle is incredibly important. In laboratory conditions, it has been observed to process a strong gravitational pull that prevents the bolt from dissipating into a useless cloud of hot gas. The science behind this process is unclear. It is the first time we have observed a graviton. But it possibly it probably explains the large difference in range between the plasma pistol and the plasma rifle. Sadly, we have no idea of how to replicate this gravitational field ourselves, and without access to an effective anti-gravity emitter, the useful range of our most powerful lab-based plasma generator is only a few inches. One would hope that study of the more advanced alien weapons may shed more light on this process. In the meantime, our efforts would be better focused on the development of battlefield laser technology. We have learned enough from studying the power distribution and cooling systems of the alien weapons that I believe I can replicate them in our own designs, making building man-made, man-portable laser weapons from these new alien materials a theoretical possibility. Go to research screen. I like that idea. Laser weaponry. Commence project. UFO detected. Intercept. We will send the Beer Run, Deathwing 1, and Spitfire. Engage. Let's blow this thing up. Ooh, that was close. Beer run took a little damage there. Oh, I splashed it. Oops. I didn't mean to splash it. Thirteen is detected. Intercept. Not a jet fighter, Deathwing One and Spitfire. UFO 13 has escaped to space. That's not very helpful. 14 detected. The beer run, Deathwing and Spitfire.
Engage. Fighter one destroyed. So we just blew that one up. And we got an alien alloy. Production of Jackal Armor is finished. Let's go to the barracks. Most of our wounded have healed now. That's good. Manage soldiers. No, let's go. I want to go here. And let's give some armor out. Yay, armor. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and make some more. Four more suits for now will do. Laser weaponry. Infantry laser weapons previously existed only in the realms of science fiction. Any laser powerful enough to be a viable combat weapon would need a battery the size of a truck. The word impractical being an understatement. The arrival of alien technology has changed all of this. The enormous energy content of the alienium crystal shows a battery no larger than a standard ammunition magazine to generate up to a dozen laser beams, each capable of burning through an inch of steel. Superconducting ceramics can be used to cool the weapon, storing the waste heat from each shot and dissipating slowly enough to avoid injury, provided one is careful where they place their hands. This eliminates the need for bulky refrigeration units, reducing the size and weight of the weapon significantly. In order to minimize adjustment time for our troops, our laser weapons have been designed to operate like conventional firearms and have similar range and accuracy to their predecessors. There are some notable differences, most obviously the improved damage thermal shock weapons inflict upon their targets. Less favorably, a laser weapon will have roughly half the ammunition capacity of a ballistic weapon. In order to streamline this process, we have designed a single standardized battery for all of our laser weapons. The design is not complex. A cylindrical steel jacket that contains an alenium crystal and locks into the weapon with a simple twist. These power cells are trivial to manufacture compared to the weapons themselves, so are available in effectively unlimited quantities. Be aware that manufacturing these weapons comes at a large amount of alien alloys and is both expensive and time-consuming, but I be still believe they represent a good investment to fight this. At the very least, some new toys may release me at morale amongst your men. Okay, uh, let's do Elenium. I want heavy laser weapons, but I think researching the alloy is a good idea. By the way, really quick, I forgot to do something. No, it already did flag it. Never mind. Okay, go to workshop screen. Let us kill the armor. 40,000 for one and 40 man days each. Eeks. Carbine. Precision, I'm assuming, is a sniper rifle. Let's start with a couple rifles. Make, say, four of them. 16 days total. Well, there's one. Two. A three. The radar array is finished. UFO detected. Intercept. Spitfire, Deathwing 1, and not a jet fighter. Go. UFO 16 detected. And 17 detected. Come on. 
And 18 detected. Great. That's just wonderful. Still refueling. I gotta get one of these things. It's gonna auto resolve. Let's see here. Manufacturer, did any of our. One of them finished. Who to give it to? Well, first of all, I think I'm going to change who's on the plane. Let's take off Aso Thorns and grab Drachnon. This will work. Huh. Here we go. We will give you the laser rifle. Sounds like I need to give you a decent bit of ammo. Well, let's do this. Please make it before dark. And yes, Jammin' Dude, you will be firing your laser. Okie dokie. We are not in a corner, but we are at least on. No, we are in a corner. And this seems to be another of those maps that I don't particularly care for. Back on. Malkuth. And Jammin' Dude. Whoa, he kind of snuck up on us. Shall we deal with that? It's test fire. We apparently missed. Good. Mifatu. I don't necessarily want to blow this guy up. 
Doom K. Does not have a clear shot. Now he does. 23 damage. Frick D. Another twenty one. And we got him. That's one down. Seeing anything else over there. Fall back a bit. Let's see here. We got target. Let's get some form of cover here. come up and crouch behind the wall here. Zoom K. <laughs> nice shot, Doom K. There's a civilian running away. Doom K, I believe you deserve your kill here. Wow, you hit him even with the tree in the way. Very impressive. <laughs> Not quite enough to finish him off. <laughs> there we go. Nice shot, Swift Note. second. And Mefatu. Draknon up here. And Lakuth here. Dracknon, we're going to hotshot you from building to building. There's a civilian. Doom K, we're going to bring you over here. There's another civilian taking cover. This way, 
Fatu up to the wall. Move Fricti up to the wall. Wherever these guys are, they're doing a good job hiding from me at the moment. Good call, Mr. Civilian. Get the beep out of there. We got one. There he is. Not going to try to fight him from there. Malkuth in. Seeing nothing for now. No frickin' cover. Okay, I don't particularly like that aspect of the map. Let's bring people back this way a bit. Crap. Only three damage, but still a hit I wasn't particularly expecting to take. And Swiftno can't see. There we go. We got two of them. Ooh. Um. up their way. Uh, let's go for it. Well, got one of them. Not the one I aimed at, but he got one of them. I was hoping he would take down the wall, but no luck on that. Doom K has a shot. No, he doesn't. I'll just get him some. Whoa! <laughs> nice finish. Nice shot, Doom K. I feel bad about the property damage, but not enough that I'm going to worry too much about it. Whoa, why are you going... Oh, because Mufatu's blocking the door. Whoops. I would say, though, that we are currently sweeping the map fairly effectively. And we just found the UFO. Jamming dude forward. 
Should have reloaded, oh well. I don't see anything, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything either. Leave at least some reaction fire up here. And I have a hunch the rest of them are all currently in the UFO. before I forget. Let's reload. Let them continue to provide some cover. Okay with full time units, and I want Dracon with full time units. Okay. Start closing in on this thing. Pull Malkuth around this way. Jamming dude, you're gonna come right in between the trees here. One more, keep you safe. Bring Mackenzie myself up here. Captain K, hello! Welcome to the stream. Glad you could join us. Yep, and you've missed your only shot, jamming dude. Okay, who's available here? Draconon and Mackenzie are suppressed. Jam, we're going to give you another shot. 29 damage. Nice hit. Fricty. That's a miss. And a miss. 
Drachnon's got him suppressed. <laughs> really? <laughs> Come on. Just die already. <laughs> Is anybody going to hit this guy? Well, this isn't too ridiculous. And Malkuth's way too out of position. one back here too that's unfortunate um, I hate to do this but we're going to please don't miss got him okay we're a little safer Kuth is officially in a bit of a bad position here. I'm actually going to pull him back towards the rest of the group rather than him try to fight that thing by himself. Apparently it was D we can't shoot. All that reaction finally missed that much. Finally he's dead. Okay, there's at least one more in there. There's that guy. Let's see if we two can't take care of him. That's a better shot. <laughs> nice shot, Jack Mackenzie Calhoun. There we go! That was a good mission. No civilian casualties, no Xenonaut casualties. 
Swift Note wounded for only one day, and Mifatu got his fifth kill, I believe. Jammin' Dude is now a lieutenant. Doom K is now a sergeant. And then Mackenzie Calhoun won, and Fricti are corporals. Hard to complain about that mission. And let's see, they're still refueling and rearming. So out of four, we only got one. That's not a good thing. Oh well. Elenium is the fundamental power source for all alien technology. It is a translucent yellow material that resembles amber in appearance and forms the core of the alien power source recently recovered, the rest of the device ultimately proving inconsequential. Detailed analysis of Elenium's molecular structure reveals an incredibly dense atomic arrangement, allowing the material to store energy in quantities previously thought impossible. Despite this, the material remains inert and has the half-life of nearly a trillion years. It can be cracked if enough mechanical force is applied, but this will not cause energy discharge. This can be explained by exceptionally stable arrangement of atomic chains, which also contain a clue as to how to unlock the energy trapped within. Each chain contains regular, weak bonds that can be broken with precise application of energy. By specifically targeting and breaking these weak bonds with a laser, one can easily generate a controlled energy release of virtually any size. This leads me to believe that Elenium is no more than an incredibly advanced alien battery. The molecular structure is not one that would occur naturally, nor contain any inherent energy of its own, but it makes a perfect method of storing the output from a far greater power source. As we have no way of recharging Elenium and will almost certainly be using it to power any new technology we develop, we should make an effort to recover as much as possible from UFOs and alien ground forces. Alien Alloy Fabrication and Elenium Explosives. Hmm. Let's go for alien alloy fabrication. There we go. And put in another lab. UFO 19 detected. Spitfire, Deathwing, and not a Jetfire. There's UFO 20. And 21. And 22. Okay, hold on. Oh, we got it. Okay. Auto resolve. Turn to base. Intercept. Actually, no, I don't want to do that just yet. Soldier equipment. We should have some more lasers ready. One more. We'll give it to Draconon. We got two hours before we're ready to launch again. Let's go ahead and intercept. Still not there. Still 
still two more refueling. Oh, one gauge. I can get another plane or two, I think, at my current base. Jim, dude. Looks like we are in a corner again, which is very nice. Swift note to go this way. And we'll pull you over here. I thought to. Oh boy. We got this stuff going on again. Puts a bit more sense of urgency into this. Nice shot, Swift Note. Can you finish it? No, you missed. And you cannot get back around the corner. In fact, you can't get anywhere. Jamming, dude. Nice finish. There's that one. Doom K. Not much of a chance with that shot. How about from here? We'll take it anyway. <laughs> nice shot. Let's see here, we need... Finish Draknon. Fricky up. Malkuth. Mefatsu <laughs> has been shot at. Yep, they don't like me much, this mission. Okay, so something shot at Mifatsu. There's the UFO. Kind of nice to find early. Uh, 
And that's probably the guy that shot at Mafatu. More likely I'm going to blow myself up if I do that. I'll just get in position to take him out next turn. No chance for him. And we'll bring Mackenzie up as well. No chance. Nice shot, Draconon. Takes care of him. Jim. Seems a little early for that to me. These two try to hold down the uh, entrance here. Doom K. And Mathatu. Start to close on this thing here. Swift no, we are going to have you take a quick peek around this way. And we'll have you get in here with some cover. Fricty and Melkuth, I want to have continue to cover the entrance. Ow. There's a hit. That was Doom K. Anybody here have a... Yes. Let's see what this will do really quick. Restore some HP at least. No! Bastard! Payback from Malkuth.
Doom K is down. I am sorry, Captain K. Those bastards. We will make them pay for it. You might not be dead. There's the chance you're just wounded. Pay they shall. We're knocking on their door. No friendly fire! Jammin' Dude has broken and is fleeing. That is not good. Malkuth has broken and is fleeing. Drachnon is bleeding from one wound and has taken 5 HP damage. This is not good. Um... Crap, I can't do anything about it till next turn. Here for shield. I really don't want to do this. But I don't really feel I have another choice at this point. I hated doing that. Pull him out of the way at least a bit. And Swift Note shot is blocked. Yes, I know he is. We're doing something about that now. your weapon back in. Jammin' dude, go get your weapon back. Malkuth, go get your weapon back.
See, they're still playing with the psionic crap. This guy can't shoot worth a damn. Of course, we're not much better. Executed. Nice finish, Draknon. And Doom K has been killed in action. I am sorry, Doom K. Damn, I hate that we lost that data core, but. Let's go shoot down this guy. This looks like a big one. I don't like that fact. Whoa! Holy crap. Um Um Yeah, um ouch is an understatement there. Oops. Yeah, ouch is not the right word there. Um, let's take the wounded off. We'll put on Greg Draco. And uh, Ace of Thorns. And let's see here. This will be Doom K One. How's the manufacturing coming here? No new rifle. Um, we're gonna go over here. We gotta put somebody else on the ship still. CK Hall. Take the laser weapons off so I can give them to guys on the ship. And 
One, two, Ace of Thorns. And we'll give one to Swift Note. So everybody except for Hawk has armor. Let's give that one. There we go. Now everybody's got armor. Everybody's got ammo. Okie dokie. Just a few. I'd rather do this at the daytime if I can. Intercept. We're not going to make daytime. I'm worried it'll be gone by the time day hits, so we're going to have to do this at night. Night mission and not in corner. Do not want... I am uh, not exactly excited about this. Thank you. 
Yes, jamming dude, lots of flares. Is this the biggest UFO I've shot down yet? But I have to raid it at night. Do not want. Okay, so there's the edge of the map that way. And there is a type of alien I've never seen before. That I just hit for a whopping two damage. Um... That can't be good. Restricted. Um. I have no idea what the heck I'm dealing with here. Really, you couldn't just... Oh, son of a bitch. So yeah, something uh, tells me we're probably uh, got a decent chance here. We're looking at a party wipe. Hmm. 
Oh, can't move you without. Gonna get dragged on closer for now. I mean, swift note. Fatu can make it across too. Yeah, this guy seems decidedly like something I do not like. There's some damage. Okay, so my laser weapons can do something. Okay, we got one. That flare didn't exactly go as planned. Not gonna lie, these guys have me feeling pretty tense. Considering 
and basically have two, maybe four soldiers who can hurt them. shot. next turn. blocked again. I really don't want to go in. We might be able to hit him there. There we go. It's a miss. There's 17. somewhere I can hit him. <laughs> there we go. That was it. Just the two. Oh, I did not like that. New projects available for research. Alien electronics and directional thrusters.
Nothing I can do with half my fleet down. Andron assemble disassembly. Androns are bipedal robotic infantry. They stand approximately two meters, six feet seven inches tall, and are constructed from the same alien materials as the hulls of alien craft. They are heavily armored, utterly fearless, and capable of firing heavy weapons on the move, but seemingly suffer from a lack of situational awareness. Combat videos do not show a single instance of an Andron taking cover. Perhaps the aliens believe their robotic guardians invulnerable to our weapons. Either way, you should exploit this flaw in their programming. The technology used in the recovered Andron is at once simple and complex. The design is elegant. An alenium reactor is mounted with an armored component in the droid's torso and uses a branching cable running down the back of the torso to distribute power to the rest of the body. Each joint maintains an array of powerful hydraulics and servo motors, allowing fine control of each of the droid's robotic limbs. Though alien materials make this design more effective than anything we could create, the basic mechanical setup could be replicated using human technology without enormous difficulty. What human technology could never replicate is the complex network of sensors that fill almost every spare inch of the droid's internal space. We cannot even identify many of the instruments, but their collective role is obvious, recording data on the droid's surroundings and feeding it into the processing units encased in each metal skull. While it is an extremely effective combat unit, we have genuine questions over why the Andron exists at all. The parallels with organic life are obvious and clearly deliberate. It has a reactor placed where a living creature would have a heart, an electronic brain inside its armored head, even a power distribution system that mirrors the nervous system of a living creature. I can see no compelling reason to build a bipedal combat robot at all. A wheeled or track design would be more stable, faster moving, better protected, and present a smaller battlefield target. Is it vanity? Stupidity? Puzzling, to say the least. The light drone is a small saucer-shaped drone approximately 140 centimeters wide with a thruster array mounted on the rear of the saucer and the sensors and weaponry on the front. It is capable of hovering, but is usually sighted skimming the battlefield roughly a meter above the ground. This allows it to move freely over small obstacles or otherwise impassable terrain such as water. Disassembly of recovered wreckage suggests that the heart of the drone is an alenium reactor no larger than a man's fist. We assume the mass of alien circuitry that surrounds it is, in fact, the drone's electronic brain. The lack of any visible receiver antenna suggests that these units are fully autonomous when operational. An engine array on the rear of the drone provides forward motion, while the hover effect, and probably pitch and roll, is generated by the dozen small thrusters that dot the underside of the drone. The frontal part of the saucer is filled with a powerful scanner that can monitor almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum, giving these drones excellent sight ranges. The drone is armed with an unusual integrated weapon we have dubbed the Burst Cannon. The plasma generation array has been designed to emphasize rate of fire above all else, allowing it to fire extremely quickly, but leaving it underpowered even compared to the plasma pistol. A single shot would probably not even kill an unarmored civilian. As the shell of the drone itself is also not even thick enough to resist small, sustained small arms fire, I suspect these units are disposable scout units, primarily designed to locate and suppress enemies so the accompanying aliens can deal with them more easily. A support role, rather than a hunter role, it seems. The Corvette is a medium-sized UFO. It is the first genuine alien warship we have encountered, exchanging the delicate wing surfaces used by smaller UFOs and sensor amplifiers for sturdier hull construction and more powerful weapons. The armor plating on this craft is the same stuff as on the lighter UFOs, but applied in greater quantities, adding enormous survivability at the cost of greatly increased weight. Hello, Mafatu! Welcome to the stream! The large engines mounted in the rear of the vessel are enough to keep it airborne, but it is slow and ponderous compared to the lighter craft that preceded it, and therefore vulnerable to heavy torpedoes. The power requirements of these engines necessitate both a second power core and an improved method of power transmission. 
The hull electronics are much more advanced than previously, so we have extracted them for further study. The primary armament of the Corvette is a forward-firing heavy plasma cannon. This has a slow rate of fire, but generates a powerful explosive projectile that is just as deadly when used to bomb ground targets as it is when used against aerial opponents. These projectiles travel relatively slowly, and you may find that our more agile interceptors are able to avoid them with an evasive roll maneuver, but they will inflict heavy damage on anything they hit. Be very careful about flying your interceptors into its firing arc. I kind of learned that. Uh, let me go ahead and save really quick. Enter save name. Ouch. Give me one second here, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so where are we at here? We're four days, nine hours from our third laser rifle. We obviously need more laser weapons. Um, excellent on alien alloy fabrication, which will hopefully get us better armors. Oh boy. UFO 23 is detected, and we've still got two ships down. That's not good. And 24. 25. 23 intercepted. Auto resolve. We used up almost all of our ammo. Not a base. Should have at least. Let's see here. Let's change up who's coming a little bit here. Drachnon and Jammin Dude are still healing. Take out Greg Draco. Take out Malkuth. Grab Mfatu Jr. And we will grab. Smitty Leroy Jenkins. And let's see here. Give Mfatu Jr. a laser rifle. Let's see here. I just took you out. Your armor and you out. Anyone not have armor? All armored. Sorry if I'm kind of quiet for a little bit, guys. I have gone completely parched here. I've got a uh, jammin' dude running to get me something to drink. And unfortunately, we are going to have another night mission. Okay, so we've got another nighttime mission. Hold on one second, folks. That's a little better. Okay, we're at least on the edge of the map. 
and more or less in the corner. These guys. There's some early damage. It's a miss. Nice shot, though, Mafatu Jr. Smitty Leroy Jenkins. Misses. Ace of Thorns. Nice shot. <laughs> I see what you did there, Mufatu. Oh crap, I didn't mean to move him again. I hate when I do stupid stuff. Lord Pettit! Good morning! Welcome to the stream! Bacon is greater than all, I will give you that. Okay... Yes, yeah, oh, I, we will not argue with you over bacon. I mean, it's bacon. How could you argue over that? I mean, it's bacon. Come on, Dr. Jr. Smitty Leroy Jenkins. There's a hit, nice shot. That definitely didn't work. Just sit you there. CK Hulk. I don't think I can get Mafatu. Well, he might be able to hit from there. No, he doesn't have enough time units to fire. Just go around the corner over here. Oh! Ow! Not good. Um... 
Not good, not good, not good. Who's got a med kit? Fricky has one. Get him there next turn. Here comes another. Nice shot. Okay, Fricky, get over there. There, now you're not bleeding anymore, at least, Mifatu. Ace of Thorns. Come on. Hit it. Damn it. Ooh, Mifatu Jr. looks closer here. That'll teach him. He lived. Wow, I didn't expect that. There we go. Only three people have lasers, Lord Pettit. You're next. Throw a flare up there so we can see him better. That's not good. Let's at least make ourselves a harder target there. Thought you can reload. And our shieldman, Mackenzie Calhoun. There we go. Yes! Nice reacting fire, guys. Sorry, needed a drink. There's the UFO. Hey, we're a team here, Mafatu. 
Commissar Pettit, if you are making us, trying to make us jealous, you are succeeding, sir! Okay, we found the UFO. We threw a flare at our own feet. Because apparently we like to do that. Met Fatu Jr. Frick D. Let's move you over here. Swift note. Ace of Thorns. You are an evil, evil man, Lord Pettit. An evil, evil man. Okay. We're going to hold position until our shield man gets here. Wow, you're giving it more time than I would have. Okay, let's preferably not blow up things on the inside this time. Mind you, we didn't have much choice the last time, but... <laughs> we got two of them, one here and one back there. Out of the way. Let's get more out of the way. A nice hit. Smitty. No luck. Swift note. One down. Nice shot. Takes a reaction shot. So we've got quite a few of them left in there still. At least an obstacle eliminated. <coughs> Swift note. <coughs> Smitty. <coughs> Leave up a little. <coughs> oh. Oop. That's not exactly cover. If 
Matu Jr. has taken five points of damage. Let's see if he can't get to some payback. There's 26 points for you. That's him. One to go. Fricty, move you closer. Nice try, you almost got him. Nice shot! That's it! Mifatu is injured for two days. Mifatu, Mifatu Jr. for two days. Mifatu for ten. Mifatu earned a medal that I've not seen yet, so let's see what you just got. Really quick, though, first, how are the interceptors? Rearming. Mefatu. Oh, Charlie's not back yet. Alien alloy fabrication is finished. Hold on, I need to take a drink before I can uh, do this. Good news, Commander. I have developed a method of shaping captured alien alloys, allowing us to incorporate them into our designs for the first time. This is largely a result of taping, tapping the vast reserves of energy locked away inside our stores of alanium. Through the foundry processes are a little more complex than simply blasting the materials with our upgraded laboratory lasers until they melt. For the sake of brevity, I will leave the explanation at that. Needless to say, this is a discovery of enormous significance. We can vastly improve the efficiency of our existing technology with alien materials, but they also open the door to ideas that seemed impossible only a few weeks ago. The frontiers of science have moved more in the past few months than they did in the previous century. Some of these alloys have properties that barely even exist in theoretical science. I must admit that my team are struggling with the pace of advance. We are sometimes as much limited by our scientific education as we are enlightened by it. The proposal for developing improved battlefield infantry armor with these materials may therefore seem a little underwhelming, but it marks only the start of what we can achieve. I would not be surprised if we were building whole vehicles or entire aircraft out of them soon. In the meantime, if you see any off-duty scientists strolling around the base, please remind them that A. They should be in bed and that B. Research materials should stay within the laboratory at all times. The number of unauthorized upgrades appearing across the base is matched only by the amount of yawning in my labs. <laughs> Wolf Battle Armor. Let's see here. Do I want the thrusters or do I want the armor? I think I want the armor. Oh, that's right, I can get more scientists. That will be nice. Okay, let's go see what Mafatu's medal is. Oh, can I intercept yet? No, of course not. No time has passed. Awarded for active participation in 10 combat missions. Congratulations, Mifatu. Oh, you know what? Mifatu Jr. will probably be healed in time. Can we try to intercept either yet? Yes. Deathwing, not a jet fighter. Go. Return to base. They are gone. 
UFO 24 detected. We are still refueling. I'm not even trying with how far away that's going. Laboratory construction is complete. And laser rifle production is finished. Go to base. We will make... First of all, Smitty. No, they're just laser rifles for now. Though sometimes I think they're being referred to as pew pew die guns. Fabrication. I'm going to make one pistol. It will only take two days. Scientists have arrived. Yay! Production of my pistol is completed. Okay. Manufacture. I think we need a couple more rifles. Make... Four more for now. Wolf Battle Armor. The Wolf Battle Armor is a direct replacement for the Jackal Combat Armor. Using the remarkable properties of alien alloys to provide extra protection to your men in combat. Each individual suit requires a large amount of money and alien alloys to fabricate in our workshops, but they should dramatically increase the combat effectiveness of our men. Wolf Armor consists of numerous parts. An armored helmet with reinforced visor, thick torso protector plates, armored pads for the shoulder, elbow, and knee joints, plus ballistic gloves and combat boots atop a fire-resistant undersuit. Collectively, this offers dramatically improved resistance to injury. The centimeter-thick breastplate is capable of stopping a 50 caliber round at point-blank range. It is the equivalent of walking around with three inches of steel strapped to your chest. Both the plating and the undersuit have also been impregnated with a dense network of ultrafine superconductor filaments, which absorb the heat from energy projectile and dissipate it across the full surface of the armor, giving the soldier underneath a much improved chance of surviving the impact. None of this appears to have dramatically improved the mood of your soldiers. Indeed, I cannot recall a single smile from the miserable sod since the invasion began. It is almost as if they do not realize quite how difficult working in the laboratories can be. A little more gratitude would hardly go amiss. Yes, we do. Buzzard jumpsuit. Yeah, we're not going to do that now. Um, thinking alien electronics. Ooh, almost everybody went down. That's not good. We've got a Spirit Fire, Deathwing, and the Beer Run. Resolve. Return to base. Oh, quick, 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 quick. Go, 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 go. Actually, no, hold on. We have another laser rifle ready? No. Intercept. Wait, no, 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 no. Frick, I almost forgot. We gotta take the... Mufatu Jr.'s heal, but Mufatu was not. 
We will grab Draconon's Yield. have a laser rifle to give you, so let's get you some ammo for that shotgun. Please get there before night! Ah! Well... We're going to save upon landing, because our time is basically up, and we will, uh, night landing, or night crash. We are going to wrap this one up here, as after two hours it is, well, that time. I hope that you have enjoyed this one. Didn't go great, but it could have gone worse. We're still up and running, at least. I almost didn't even realize time was up until I glanced at the clock as it was loading. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be about it. Um, thanks to everybody who have stopped in today, including Gaffer77, who has not spoken in the chat. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. As always, you'll be able to find the replay of this on the YouTube channel um, starting tomorrow afternoon. I will have it uploaded. As well as we will have two new episodes of Let's Play Shining Force 2 and two new episodes of Let's Play East Origin up to next week. Well, this week now. Once again, I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you uh, enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll be back to do this again next week. Lord Pettit, I am jealous of your bacon! Anyway, take it easy, everybody. Have a good evening, and we will see you next time.